gentlemen, welcome to uh, this evening's Birkenhead Constituency Committee. This is the first meeting of the municipal year, so the first business for the committee is to appoint a chair for this evening's meet um, for the committee for the coming year. So are there any nominations for chair? Can I move Councillor George Davis? Are there any other nominations? I'm fine. Councillor Davis is in here. Chair. Thank you. I should say that myself, can we all turn that to all back forms off? Yeah, sorry. Ever done beyond me, okay. It's done now. Um, right, welcome everybody, and it's, it's, it's fantastic to be able to come out to the sticks, as I always call it. So instead of being in the town hall, we're out working with the people in the communities where it all takes place, and this is a wonderful uh, evening where we can actually see and listen to two very good. Um, George Thompson is going, to, is going to give us a, a, a good talk, I believe, in a minute. Um, and he brought his lovely dog with him somewhere. Uh, and then we've got a business presentation and the improvement digital presentation. So we've got those two items on the agenda tonight. I'd like to move because we've got certain people who've got to be very handy. I want to finish this by quarter past seven. So we need to just concentrate our time into the next two points. Okay. George, you take I'm going to close that now. Right. So, back to the agenda. Uh, appointment of Vice Chair. Can I move Moira? Yes, definitely. Okay, any other nominations? Moira, thank you. Um, then we move on to um, apologies. Any apologies? I've given Cal Phil Davis a bit of interest. Phil Davis. Phil Davis. Phil Davis. Yeah. Stuart Kelly. Stuart Kelly. Uh, Paul Dancy. Paul. Anybody else? No? That's it. Phil Davis. Phil Davis. Okay. Um, then without further ado, uh, members' code of conduct. Anyone got any declarations of interest? George, I'll declare um, a normal declaration of interest about issues around Magenta as I'm a board director of Magenta Living. And I've noticed there's a letter about the Hoyle Golf Resort, and I think members of the planning committee uh, <coughs> should bear in mind that they will, it may become part of a planning application that we should keep an open mind uh, around that, that decision purely in planning terms. So I'll declare that. And in that, in that context, uh, Steve, I think you're absolutely right. So the members of the planning committee will declare. Our interests as well. There's a few of us. Deputy. Yeah. Okay. Joe. Next day, I'm interested in the business improvement district. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we're down to that. And apologies for absence from call. Minutes of the last meeting, which have been circulated with tonight's agenda. Um, would someone like to move there out of true record? So I'll move the chair. Thank you, Steve. Have a Thank you, Orange. And um, are there any matters arising from those minutes? Anybody wants to raise? You all okay with them? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Then we'll move straight away into um, our first um, Beachwood Little Centre, big local play area, and ski park presentation. Uh, very good friend to a lot of us uh, here for a long, long time, George Thomas. So, George, would you like to come and give us your presentation, please? Where would you like to be, Sam? Whatever you feel comfortable, George. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, George. I suppose that what I decided here was to use the title "Let's Celebrate Beachwood" uh, because we all know there's lots of choppy waters been going on around the country and, and I would say that there's a lot of good stuff going here on the Beachwood. If you look, um, you know, here the, the Ford estate was notorious in the 80s and I wouldn't have wanted to live there, always in the papers, always being vandalised, loads of drug use, one of the worst estates in Birkenhead. And then that was in 19, 1981. So, you know, all I'm saying is that was the history. Okay. Um, and then 
we, we had beechwood rising, you know, from the from the ashes, and it was resident power. Home watch was the, the sort of key to actually, you know, bringing the community on on, on the forward as it was then. <coughs> and Wirral Council did a, a sort of good job working in partnership with the residents. And I suppose the key to it all then, in, in 1981, was the Beechwood uh, community, uh, community Association, which actually created Beechwood Community Trust, which was to be the trading arm and, and try to be a, a sustainable organisation. Uh, we then, the, the Estate Management Board um, was created, and that, that was sort of uh, running alongside Wirral Council in managing the stock on the estate and then it went out to, to, to a sort of vote as to who was going to uh, uh, you know, manage the estate and then uh, lo and behold Beechwood and Ballantyne Housing Association was created. And there's a picture of uh, Fender Way by our residence um, photographer Mrs Eileen Turner who's been around the Beechwood for a long time. She's responsible for most of these photographs here. So, look at this. Um, so, a picture of Valentine Estates, the stock transfer went from, you know, um, from Wittleboard Accountant to the newly created uh, Beechwood and Valentine Community Housing Association. And Beechwood land was used for some housing development, which created Section 106 money and an EMB surplus of money which helps to refurbish this place we're in today. Um, the asset transfer um, of the Beechwood Play Community Centre was about two years ago, I suppose, where the, this building was transferred um, from the local authority to the residents. We've now created um, a company called the Little Centre Beechwood Limited, and most of the uh, residents here are directors of that company, I'm one of the directors. And then if we fast forward, and it's 38 years ago, on, on what happens on the, on the Beechwood. Okay. No, you lost one, sorry. That's it. So, Big Local, um, that, that, for those of you who don't know, Big Local uh, was given to estates where um, haven't received lottery funding for, of any size, uh, and then Beechwood hadn't. So that was basically a million pound over 10 years, which is £100,000 uh, a year. Um, a, a big local partnership was created. Linda Finn, who's here, is the chair. Um, and the residents, is predominantly led and driven by residents, and no decisions can be made unless there's 51% of the residents have got an input into that. Um, so refurbishment started on here approximately 18 months ago now, which in many ways has been a nightmare, but that's another story. Um, but we, we're here and uh, we, we, we're slowly moving on. And Dave here is our, um, our new centre manager, whose work is a drive um, place to be rented um, and used as much as possible. Um, and then we've had tremendous support, and it's good to see Mark turn up, that well known footballer. Um, Jim from Tramia Rovers, Mark Palios, and he's actually brought the cup tonight. And I think they can have the photographs taken with him for the mark. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, and Tramia Rovers, what they've been doing, they've actually given, up, given us sort of 33 tickets for every home game for Beachwood residents, and we sort of whacked that out so the, the residents who, who, who you know, come in and want to go. And then we've got, you know, we, we sort of really try where we've got the We'd call it the Beechwood Digital Hub, where we've got free Wi-Fi in the Beechwood Community Trust, the, um, the little centre here, Beechwood, funded by the big local, that's paid for that. And we've also got free Wi-Fi in the Beechwood Recreation Centre and also Beechwood Library. So what's happening now, BBCHA is now gone and the stock was uh, transferred um, to the Liverpool Housing Trust. And um, now it, it, it sort of uh, moved on, and, and um, we're now, I think it's with onward in the onward and upwards. Yeah. But just to go back to, to you know, you know, to the little centre, um, again, um, you can see out there it's a bit desperate outside in the way it looks, um, but we've 
uh, secured some funding. And you can see here is the, the, the visual picture of what's going to happen. It's going to happen in the next month. Pat, you know, what was anything you'd like to say? Paddy Mulligan is, runs a player community centre here. And you want to say about it? I can quickly say, quickly say it's always been a play scheme in this building. We were actually in the blues when the trust had done with Dave. Um, uh, gave the commitment that that would continue in this building and they would support the place keeping this building. <coughs> and as Tony said, the money was found for the outside, new outside play area, the old play area was very dilapidated and on its last legs. Um, so a small, a small group of us were formed to look at it. We talked to the children, uh, asked what equipment they would want. Um, number one on the list was a basket swing. We went out and looked at suppliers, um, we called Compound, was chosen. Uh, I think they, they've been used a lot of time on the middle, but so they're well known. Um, they've been out, they've never been really good for us. We've got a start date for the 9th of July. Uh, hopefully it's all going to be installed before the summer holidays. So, so, you know, I mean, it, it, a dream has become a reality, and I think if you're young people will say, great, something's happened on the beach. So, you know, thanks, man. <coughs> Um, so the other thing we've also created here is, is the Beechwood Food Garden, uh, offering help to families struggling to, to feed the families, and it's managed by and run by the Beechwood Co um, Community Association by Linda and Emma, who sort of manage the, you know, the, the food ladder. Um, what you know, what we're finding is that the, I mean, that's what I say, I'm not going to leave Beechwood Chapel out of this. Beechwood Chapel next door, they were doing this a long time ago in a very small way. We now do it in a much bigger way. And what, how we, you know, we, had, we, we got involved with uh, Frank Field and, and uh, Feeding Birkenhead, and um, we, we sort of uh, went to visit his church and uh, in Lincolnshire, which is the Christian charity where we uh, donate our money to buy these pallets, um, which we then ask people to make donations for, similar to the other organisations are doing. Doing, um, you know, around the world. Um, but last year, uh, or last Christmas, I think it's 234 campers we, we gave to residents on this estate, um, and that was a combination of Linda's been doing that for years again with Beach Community Association and Kind, uh, which is a charity that Linda's worked with for many years. Um, and then, as I say, there's lots of positives. I mean, I, I, I'm the general manager of Beachwood Community Trust. We've just secured the uh, apprenticeship contract from the Educational Skills uh, Funding Agency to deliver to residents and employers on the world for hairdressing, um, barbering, uh, childcare, and sport. And um, in the last week, we're, we're sort of now um, working with the uh, fair share. Uh, St. Helens College to deliver a, a, a wide range of training courses for volunteers working in the community. We've also, you know, doing some negotiations with um, the college to sort of um, look at delivering the Work World programme, which is, is revolving around universal credit and where people have to do certain things and we can help them to do that. Um, but I would say that. What we found difficult, and I'm sure it's the same throughout the world, is, is trying to recruit volunteers. That is very hard. Um, people, time is limited, um, and, and, but we do need sort of people to help us here to run the place because otherwise it, it, it won't be here in 12 months. So I, I would I'd say is the future for me for Beachwood, and I, I, I came here I think it's 16 years ago this year, for a year, uh, and I'm still here. I, mean, I would say things are looking good, and uh, there's a lot of good work being done by the residents, and I think it's there to be commended for, for the kind of stuff they're doing. Any of anyone got any questions they'd like to ask me? Yes. Oh, Alex. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about the Okay, sorry, Ali. Very remiss of me. <laughs> we did. We haven't got the, 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 the video there. I mean. Again, the skateboard park, which is over there, was another dream that became a reality. Um, and 
the young people with consulted on that, by the way. And that had uh, LHT, I think we involved in that one, did Yeah. It was a, a real bit of partnership working where um, the young people were sort of consulted, what do you want? We brought, uh, I think LHT paid for the session before skateboarding, um, which is here. Um, and uh, it, it's been very popular, so popular, I think there's even young people coming from Liverpool to use it. So is there more you'd like to say about it, Ali? No, I think it's great. But I would just like to say it's really great for the, for the young people because it's, it's really something that was needed for a long, long time. Yeah. And it would also be remiss of me, I mean, Harry Smith was a councillor for a long time here, he recently retired. Harry's been a stalwart in getting things done, and I suppose he, he, he fought for us to track the Section 106 money down for us and see where he was and, and make sure the skate board, you know, park actually, um, you know, got built. So I would say, you know, the way it's looking now, things are looking good on people. So again, any, any questions on what we did? Any questions from any members? No? Yeah, no. Sure. Yeah, well, George, uh, you know, we've been very envious um, of what's been achieved on the Beachwood and you've been a, obviously a driving force behind it. We, 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 we're across the road, as you know, I represent the, the uh, Ridge, Ridgeway, uh, Ridgewood Estate, but uh, the Nokia as we, we call it. Um, and what we, we've had a problem is that we had a generation of people, a residents association, who, who grew old and then we've had real difficulty replacing them. Now, this issue about new volunteers, we've got a little group of, of people, but they're very inexperienced. Could I be rude enough to ask you, could you possibly, if we could arrange a get together with them for you to sort of guide them how, how you achieve what you achieve? Because at the moment, the they feel a bit overawed by the, the, the tasks that they're taking on. So I'm, I'm sure you know the rest, you yeah. know, various partnerships you mentioned we've got, we embrace that. But what I would say, um, Steve, I've, I've been around a long time. We've probably got to look at the age profile on committees now, and you've got to look at it's all sort of 40, 50 plus, and it's very difficult to get that next generation to show the same commitment. Say, I leave you, and they, forgive me, how old are you now, I leave you? 86, and she's still involved with the community, she's been around a long time, so it's difficult to get people like that, people like Linda, who've got, you know, got the time to give up, so, it, I mean, we try, you know, I tried a number of years ago with Millennium Volunteers, which was quite successful, but there's always this thing that people don't really want to do things for nothing, because you, you're seen as a, you know, softy. But uh, yeah, we're, I'm sure we'll more than willing to be in such a Yeah, all right, Steve. Anybody else? Thanks very much indeed, George. That excellent presentation, George. Can I just say, if anybody's facilities here are excellent, you're welcome to have a look around. If anybody knows, if anybody's looking for space on my end, can you let me know? Okay. Maybe it's important we get the place you. Okay, so after that great um, start, can we move on to the Head Business Improvement District presentation? That's going to come from Gemma Nichols and Mark Clemson. Thanks, Ali. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chairman, uh, thank you for the invite this evening. It was really, really appreciated. I think it's good for us to, to come into the communities to sort of inform you about what the Birkenhead uh, Improvement District is about. Uh, thank you to Joe for the kind invitation and put the pressure on us to get something sorted. Um, just a, a very quick overview of sort of my background, which will sort of enhance hopefully what, what we're trying to do within the bid. Um, for my sins, I was a police officer in Merseyside for 30 years, uh, predominantly working in Birkenhead and the Wirral, uh, so I know a lot of the issues, concerns, and things that have gone wrong and things that have gone wrong. Uh, I know George from, from way back, uh, he's a little bit. Uh, Greater than the last time I saw it. <laughs> um, the Birkenhead bid, um, just before I go on, this is Gemma Nickel, just in case you've got any hard questions. I sort of answer the easy ones. Gemma's my boss, so obviously if there's any really sticky questions, put them towards Gemma. Thanks. Um, 
Burton and Burton, it started in uh, <coughs> April 2016 as a result of a vote within uh, the business community within a geographical part of the town centre. Um, the bid is about trying to increase footfall, so trying to make it look better, trying to make it look safer and, and be safer and look brighter and smarter. Uh, a good place to invest in, a good place to work in, a good place to live in. Um, okay, there we go. There is two town hosts, myself and Kerry Murphy. Kerry is new to the role, she came in October last year. As I say, I've been uh, working within the bid for about the last couple of years. We've got four key priorities. Uh, first priority, a safer, more secure Birkenhead. Um, a cleaner, more attractive Birkenhead. Better marketing and promotion of Birkenhead and better support for the business in Birkenhead. A lot of this we do in line with the Middle Chamber of Commerce. Um, they're a valuable asset and a valuable tool to our armory. Um, we rely on them greatly, um, we're supported greatly by them, and they encourage the business growth within the community. Uh, I know there may be people here who are already involved potentially with the Chamber through a variety of different reasons, but they do give us extra sort of leverage. Um, a safe and secure Birkenhead. Birkenhead has its problems, as is every town in the country. It's not just Birkenhead. Um, with that in mind, we've got townhouses, as I say, there's myself and Kerry. We look to try and transfer our skills or use our skills that we've got from previous employments for the better within the area. Um, we try and use a multi-agency approach. We can't do this on our own. We need your support. We need every single person's support. Jean is a member of the bid steering group and she's greatly appreciated within the work she does in the town centre. She's very supportive of what we do. We've had numerous conversations about the issues. Um, we want to try and build strong working relationships with the businesses, with the community, um, with everybody that has an input within the town centre. Um, what we tried to do recently, um, working with the local police, there's a new sergeant in town, new sheriff, um, Alan McCone, if I'm right in saying. And we've got a meeting with him. We're trying to sort of address issues rather than sort of put sticking plasters on. We're looking at long-term projects. We're looking to try and uh, bring value through the bid from the investments of the police, from local councillors, from local business, uh, from local sort of community groups. They all have an input. It's all valuable input. Um, so we try to start a bit of a focus group. It's almost like a bit of a splinter group, really. There are things in place like the town centre meetings. There are the ASB sort of meetings that are held in Wallasey. But we try to sort of make this a little bit more local and try and address the local issues, of which there are numerous, but they are, I think, if we put things in place, they can be achieved. So, can I just touch on that as well? I just want to highlight the work that we all do with Jean as well. Um, so next week we're, you know, hit this, <coughs> next week we're, is it this week, Friday? This week, <laughs> Friday. Losing track of the days. We hit the streets on Friday and we're going to go around the need areas that we've kind of identified where we already know there's an issue. So Jean's going to be coming out with the police and also Paul Stewart. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to be identifying that and coming back and working on a bigger plan to hopefully combat that in some way, shape or form. No, no, um, through the, the clean and more attractive Birkenhead, we've tried to keep up with putting flower baskets out on some of the, the, the street furniture, i.e. the lampposts. We've put planters out, and we've worked in conjunction with the YMCA to, to get that. Um, street furniture refurbs, we've just done a, a big uh, painting job, or, or myself and a couple of colleagues have done that, uh, in Hampton Square, and, and we're still working around the Woodside area. We're trying to make key points of people coming into the area looking like they should. We should be proud of the area that we live in. We should be proud of the area that we work in. And when people get off the ferry boats or when they get off the trains or when they get off the buses or travelling through the arterial routes, we should be having the best we can be because it's the first impression. It doesn't matter what anybody says, it is the first impression people get and we need to make that and we need to be smarter. Um, been, I've been doing some stuff down one side today. It's simple stuff. It's trying to make those small wins. Uh, we've done a couple of uh, cleanups, or new, a number of cleanups. We've done it with the white, uh, with uh, with McDonald's, and Paul from McDonald's, the boss there, he's been very, very supportive. We've also done it with local uh, housing agencies, including uh, Magenta, and we've done it with Forum Housing as well. 
Uh, we've done one recently with St Anne Street, which was a clear up. It wasn't anything fantastic in the sense of, you know, we just tried to make a little bit of a difference for the local people, both the community and the businesses. There's a little uh, parade of shops there. So that was sort of something that was high on our list to try and get done. Um, one of the big things that I sort of hopefully brought was knowing a little bit of legislation, not particularly sort of, um, not the criminal law side of things, but the sort of use of things like the Town and Country Act. Uh, this is legislation that basically means if you provide evidence to the council of a building that is, or a, or a uh, piece of land that is bringing the area down, the council can um, instigate, I think it's a 215 order, after a brief bit of discussion with the owner of the property. The legislation allows the council to, if, they, if there's no movement with the, with the dialogue with, the, with the, uh, the owner of the property or the land, that the council can actually get that land cleared up and they attach the, the cost to the owner. So there's a lot of dialogue before that comes to that point, but the bottom line is there's legislation there that can help clean the town. We've got the likes of the Central Hotel. Um, I've put legis that, that legislation in on the, on the Central Hotel. There's an area called Dacre Street, which I presumably a lot of people will know where that is, corner of Argyle Street. It was being used for fly tipping, it was being used for drug abuse, it was being used by some of the thieves that were congregating and using the, the, the market and the retail area. Somebody nearly died in there from a drugs overdose. <coughs> the whole place was, it was an absolute mess. The local businesses had taken seven, no, five years to try and get them resolved. We came along and within six months and the help of the council, through the solicitors of the council, we got a problem resolved in three months. So that's the use of legislation. Didn't cost us anything, didn't cost the council anything other than the use of their time. But that was very, very effective. Um, street banners, we've put street banners up around the sort of the area of the bid. They are been paid for by sponsors to highlight their businesses or their sort of organisations. That sort of marks out where the bid is. We want to try and encourage more of that to sort of highlight the area. Christmas lights, uh, we did last year. We want to try and improve on that, make it better. But everything's at a cost. There's not an endless pit. We can't do everything. But if it makes a slight difference, a slight change, then that's something that we, we look as a positive. That's the blank screen. That's the, that's the whiteboard we're going to work from from now on. Sorry, okay, up to street banners, yeah, up to Christmas lights, yeah. Good, yeah. Um, marketing promotion of Birkenhead. We've done a number of events. Uh, we'll either create our own events, but they are time consuming, so we tend to try and pick up <coughs> onto events as well. The commercial property showcase is one that was run by the bid. And the idea behind that was there was a lot of empty vacant properties within the Hamilton Square area. I didn't see them as being a negative. They were potential areas for development. So switch it around, look at the positives. As a result of that, a, a number of uh, uh, property management companies were invited in, a number of local businesses saying, look, these properties are empty. In Hamilton Square, there are numbers of buildings that don't pay any rates because I don't know the semantics of it all. They don't pay rates, don't pay business rates because of the way they're split up. Um, but that was to sort of highlight the empty properties and encourage businesses from outside the area to come in and, and sort of take up these premises. That went down very well. We just recently had the tall ships and we had the, uh, where they projected the uh, images onto the town hall. That was brilliant. I was at the uh, welcome home for the Trappier Overs lads. That was brilliant. And again, congratulations, Mr. Palios for bringing that back to, to Birkenhead and sort of highlighting the town centre once more. Um, we do a lot of collaborative working, both with the council, both with uh, different sort of organisations. With the pyramids, we've got a summer um, events coming up this year. Um, and again, we've got the Christmas lights coming up. We've got the Bee and Birkenhead Festival, which is run on the 26th of July. It's run on a Thursday, and people are asking why is it run on a Thursday. Apparently, not my decision, but the end result is apparently there's more football on a Thursday. So that's the reason behind that one, if anybody else. <laughs> marketing and promotion of Birkenhead. Obviously, through our websites, we do a lot of that. Um, proactive digital marketing campaign, campaign. I believe that's a gem to explain that one. I don't know anything about that one. Print. I do. I know. No, it's, it's the Facebook, the social media sort of stuff. So um, we put out leaflets. If you're involved in events, we'll sort of proactively look to put those through letterboxes, etc, etc. 
and will encourage and, and promote other organisations who are having the sorts of things going on in the town centre. We're looking at monthly dedicated newsletters to inform people of what's going on within the bid area and there's a creation to strategic marketing and communication plans. So that's sort of looking forwards, putting things in place and sort of going in the right direction. Just on the whole marketing and promotion of the bit, I think historically we've kind of done really, loads of really good things, but we haven't shouted about it enough. And I suppose for us, the, the key thing is telling everyone what we're doing, you know, whether it's painting a lamppost or picking up some litter or working with a community group or whatever it may be, or even going into a local business and helping them and signposting them in whatever kind of business support that they need. And um, it's one thing that we haven't shouted about enough. So. We're doing a lot of work in the next 12 months to go, right, okay, let's let's get ourselves out there and make people aware of the good work that we're doing. Again, through our Facebook page, if you don't or you don't know about our Facebook page, please go to it, like it, share it, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. Because ultimately if it grows from the centre, it grows outwards and it does then affect the likes of the beach or claw and Morton, everywhere and everywhere. Um, you know, we want people from those communities to come into the centre, we want them to have a good time, we want them to be safe, we want them to say the place looks smart, tidy. Like I say, the bid is not here, it hasn't got a magic wand that's going to say everything will be great overnight, it won't. It's taken an awful number of years to get to the point we're at. But if you don't do anything, nothing is an option. You can't just sit there and go, well, you know, something will happen. It won't, you've got to do something. And like George has said in his previous presentation, People have got to take ownership, people have got to do things. Unfortunately, there are numbers of people in our community that are happy to do that. Supporting business, um, collective buying power, there are things like um, we have sort of discounts through insurance companies, through power companies. If the bid as a group, if they get together, they're more likely to get discounts from those sorts of suppliers. Uh, training, we can offer training through the Chamber of Commerce. That might be social media training, that might be a variety of different things. Networking events, again, very important in business. Um, people go to these, they meet new people, they'll engage, they'll sort of talk about their aspirations, what they're planning to do with their businesses or not planning to do or thinking of a business, and so that grows. Uh, we've got business growth coordinators within the chamber who we can utilise. Um, we also get representation of the area through the various strategic members of the chamber. Uh, they're the people who are sort of the, the, the higher up the scale, if you like, they're the big companies, the big organisations, um, and they're the people who can sort of actively make change for the better. They're your sort of the spokesperson on behalf of the different sort of organisations. Um, business development guidance, again, sort of how you can develop your business, how you move it forward. Again, all part of the infrastructure to try to make the, the area more successful, a decent place to do business in and a decent place to visit. Sadly, that's me. Um, I'm on the right, by the way. Um, I mean, this is just engaging with the businesses. We try to go into the businesses to sort of engage with them, see what issues they've got. Without the bid, none of this would be happening. None of this would be happening. People would be sort of, the town centre would be left. We know the police restrictions, the numbers, etc. It's in the papers every day. We try and assist the police where possible in the sense of reporting antisocial behaviour. We do it through the, the council and antisocial behaviour team and we work closely with our colleagues in the police um, to try and get resolutions, to try and get uh, issues solved. Um, that's a bit of paint work, my paint work actually, so it's not too bad, so anybody wants any paint done? Um, I quite like the gold bit to be honest. Um, and today, well, as I say, I was down at Woodside, that area to the, to the right there, that was all full of um, debris, it was all sort of full of weeds, I had a, a strimmer on that, which they're all off today. So it's things like that, these are little sort of little differences that hopefully people will begin to notice. Um, people say to me on quite a few times, have you had a nice little walk round? Oh yeah, yeah. I've had a really nice walk round, yeah. Covered in paint and full of leaves and whatever else. But it's not just about that, it's about engaging with the businesses. It's asking them what problems have you got? Let's try and resolve your problems. Um, Oxton Road, Grange Road West, uh, an area that is uh, close to Jean's heart. We try to give that a profile, give that a sort of a, we've tried to sort of name it the, the, the flat iron. We've given them help with setting up the Facebook page. We hold forums, business forums for them. Um, we're letting them try to sort of take a little bit of ownership of that. We get complaints from people saying the front of your shop's dirty. There is also the other side of it where you say, well, if the front of your shop's dirty, take some responsibility. 
People used to wash their own doorsteps. It won't kill you. Get out there with a mop, buckets, swish it away. If we all if we all bail in, we all help. It will make the place look brighter. So coming up, we've got additional events for 2017 uh, and 18. The gentleman can maybe sort of touch on those. Business community cleanups. That's sort of the flat iron we're looking to hopefully have a coordinated approach. And one of my dream is dream is to have every single one of the businesses in that area out at 11 o'clock on a particular day in the week that we can get the press there and it'll look great, it'll look like a flash mob or it used to be flash but the, the idea is, is to be proactive, get them out there, get them talking to each other build a community spirit within the businesses um, new street furniture, we're looking at new bins in the area of um, the flat iron um, but we're also looking to sort of rejuvenate the existing stock um, Additional representation, remind me. <coughs> um, that is, we are actually recruiting at the moment for two additional um, part-time town hosts, so if anyone's <coughs> interested or knows anyone. Um, so we're looking to get more people within this role and out on the streets and engaging with businesses and helping with the clean-up and instilling that community spirit and faith in the local community again, so you'll see that soon. Um, we put in place a strategic plan, like everything you do, whether it's running your own business, running a, a CIC or whatever, you've got to have a bit of a plan and, and we need to have that in place obviously for the bid and for the development of the bid. The bid lasts five years, from 2016, April 2016, it will only last five years, there'll be another vote and it'll be down to the businesses, so whether that goes in for a second. The, the request is obviously that we have another five years, because obviously five years, if we then stop and then nothing else happens, then the continuity of that is wasted. Um, so ideally they will look to get another five years so that there is this base that we can work from, things that have been done in the past and we can move on to the next five years. Um, through uh, Community Action Wirral um, we're looking to try and sort of engage with a lot of the sort of initiatives across the Wirral and produce a robust volunteer programme. A lot of the work we do is done by myself and a couple of my colleagues but I'm getting really old and I'm getting really achy. Um, so it's great to have a variety of different community spirited individuals that come along. We have worked, as I say, with Forum, we've worked with the Kickstart programme that was working within the Forum, which I think is now finished, unfortunately. Um, and we've had sorts of community payback people sort of coming along and, and helping us. So that's been brilliant, uh, and we want to extend that, as I say, through the Community Action World sort of um, Forum within the Chamber. I'll pick up on the volunteers because I know a couple of people have mentioned it. So, just to give you an idea how we're trying to drive that forward. So, as Mark said, working with Community Action Wirral, we've actually in the process of creating an overarching volunteer programme for the whole of Wirral. So, similar to what you'll see in Liverpool in terms of the city stars that came on the back of the OA programme. Um, so, whether you want to get involved with getting somebody shopping for them or part of a guerrilla gardening team that goes into somebody who's vulnerable's home of an evening and sorts out their garden or whether it's a school doing a litter pick or, you know, as Mark said, it's painting a, it's painting a fence, it's painting a lamppost, whatever it may be, or it's volunteering at one of our major events. It's getting involved in the community and showing that you want to be part of Kirsten Head and Wirral. So that is being created as we speak, so watch, watch this space. There'll be an opportunity to sign up and kind of put your interest out there at the Being Back and Head Festival as well, because part of that festival is all about giving back to local community and instilling that pride back into the area as well. So, you know, the work that Mark and the team do is phenomenal, but we just need to shout about it more and instill that pride back into Back and Head as a whole. So, hopefully, that's, that's the plan moving forward. Okay, um, that's the presentation. I welcome any questions. Um, anybody has? Do you uh, I know you, you work in Central in Birkenhead, yeah. but do you work out in the, um, in, in the boundaries of Birkenhead, so this is in James, for example? No, the, 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 the bid is a geographical area within the town centre. The, the primary function of the bid is to support the businesses within. That's a shame. I know, yeah. but the idea is something that potentially could, could grow and it could sort of extend, um, you know, I mentioned a number of things there, but I'm, I'm, it's not about pick on the pops because I want one. It, there are lots of little areas that would benefit from a similar sort of programme, probably built around the same sort of way. 
Um, it's, it's how they're funded, etc., etc. That's the issue. Um, I think the, the Business Improvement District has seen that it's a case of the town centre is the hub for a lot of things, and obviously we're trying to revitalise that, which will have a spreading effect, hopefully. As I say, it won't be done overnight and it won't be done in five minutes. It will, it will, but, but, no, it's a valid thing. It's just something perhaps I may have to do. All right, so thank you. Yeah, I'm based in Hamilton Street, which is in the yeah. investment business. And we look at Market Street, Hamilton Street. And I thought, well, one of the things about the business generation and business growth and trying to bring new business into the area is to look at the parking fees. Yeah. And part of it would be a bad scheme for smaller businesses. Yeah. And you're wanting yeah. a bit, but you're also wanting to change the commerce. Yeah. That's a big yeah, it's, 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 it's a massive issue and virtually of the sort of yes. every business visits it's mentioned. Yeah. Yes, and, and that's something that you can use as a marketing tool as well to promote the business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once again, there's legislation that can actually address that situation. Where there's a change in that, I think it was in 2004, the transport, um, some of the transport law. The, the, the Labour government at the time brought it in where communities, business communities or yeah, sort of uh, private community, they can, if they put a business plan together, they can change the legislation appertaining to the uh, street markings with regards to parking, etc, etc. We've had numerous discussions at, at certain levels within, within the council about parking and it's a high source of it's high on the agenda of most businesses, and I agree that the business of having a permit, etc., would encourage. The problem that the council have said to us is, is that if we have free parking, then it actually goes the other way. You get people parking and then go to Liverpool. And the people who have, should have access can't park. So there's all sorts of issues with the parking scenario. Um, but we try to bring that sort of legislation to their, to their sort of knowledge and say, look, you know, if you want to sort of try and change things, because I think what the, the, the legislation is all about is if the landscape of the area is changing, um, it's not double yellow lines forever and ever. If, if there's new businesses moving in, if we're trying to encourage sorts of growth, that that legislation can actually sort of be utilised for those sorts of things. But I think you've got to almost put in like a business plan. Yeah, I think also it's all about supporting. It's about getting them still today, perhaps give it, give it to the charity. Yeah. So, you know, it's something to take back. No, 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 I appreciate it. Thank you for the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mark, you mentioned before about people's first impressions yeah. of Birkenhead, and you mentioned the YMCA. Yeah. I just want to pay tribute to Nigel Hughes, yeah. yeah. the chief executive yeah. of the YMCA, because yeah. he came up with the idea a few years ago about putting planters on the railings along the road. Yeah. 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 Remember at the time, a lot of people said, it'd be a waste of money, it won't last five minutes to be trashed on the streets. But when you when you come out to Birkenhead Tunnel yeah. now, drive yeah. up Butter Road, yeah. Yeah. as you go to <coughs> Tommy's home match, um, it's just fantastic. Well done, well done. It's, it's fantastic to see the, the plans and, 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 and out of the many of the things that are pulled up by whether it be the council or by organisations, the plans has remained without yeah. being really touched yeah. damaged. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen any of them. No. So, so we're trying to we're working with the, the, the YM to have more plans, etc., etc., to try and make the place brighter. But it's, a, it's one of those things where you've got to try and sort of get the balance right. If you, yeah. if you put tons and tons out, then that needs lots and lots of maintenance. Yeah. So you've got to try and do it in such a way. But things like, you know, you say there, central roundabouts, people yeah. come off the 50, the 41. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing they see is central hotel and the central yeah. roundabout. Yeah. So they're your first views. Yeah. But I agree, that is essentially something that is, is a positive from the, the, the YMC. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mark, I think it might be worth explaining where the money comes from. It comes from the business rates. Yeah, the, so sorry, yeah. Rates, yeah. If you want to explain that, yeah, the, the, way it works, the way it works simply is um, once the... the, the